In chapter one, we're going to talk about collecting data and how to organize it so we can do meaningful statistics with it. Okay, you can pause the movie right now and you can read through the learning objectives that we're covering in chapter one. This movie will only cover section 1.1. Okay, so section 1.1 talks about what are data. Okay. Um, what's important to date is that we would have variation. Life would be very boring without variation. Like if everyone was the same height or the same weight, we really have no need for statistics, but since there's lots of variation in this world, then we have need for statistics. Okay, so if you wrote a piece of the letter A on a piece of paper, right, three times, would it look the same every single time you wrote it? Or would it look the same as your neighbors, right? So it wouldn't, because we all write differently, and you even write differently from time to time. So how can we measure variation in the letter A? So you could measure its height or its width, and those would be different measurements about the letter A. Okay, so those are data that we, that we would record about you. So I could collect data and have each of you write the letter A and measure its height, and then that would be what I would record for each of you. Okay, um, data that works well for statistics is numbers. Okay, so you might have things on a scale from 1 to 10 or your height, weight, distances, there's all different kinds of things you can use that would be numbers. Okay, Some data is, is non-numeric, and we call it categorical, and that's things that fit into different categories. Okay? Just because data is a number doesn't necessarily mean it's numeric. So, so we talk about a zip code. A zip code is just a, a number that represents where you live. So it's actually considered a cate categorical variable. Um, <clears throat> So the other thing about data is when you're looking at it is don't just think of it as a list of numbers. It's more than a list of numbers. Okay. So here I have a list and it's kind of uninteresting if I just look at it. Okay. So can you think of things that these numbers may represent? Again, you can pause the recording and just think about how what these numbers might represent. A few of the things I thought of is maybe their birth weights or price in dollars and cents for lunch or maybe how far you had to go, or maybe the number of minutes it took people to run a mile. Okay? So once we say that numbers represent something and have units, then they become a lot more interesting to try to figure out what we can do with them and why we would want to do statistics with them. Okay, so data are numbers in context, and you should always be thinking about what's the story behind the numbers. So when you write, um, sentences and describe things for me, you shouldn't just say, well, the mean is five, right? You should write it in context of what the data represents. The mean has units on it. So maybe if we've measured everyone's height, you might say, oh, the average height was about 67 inches. And that's much more meaningful than just to say that the average height is 67, okay? Or even just to say the mean is 67, okay? So the other thing we're interested in is how we can collect data, okay? Um, so we're talking about this part throughout most of the semester. Okay, for now there's just there's various ways we can collect data. We can do polling. Okay, you can look at preferred customer cards, Google Analytics, okay, applications from college admissions, doctors charts. Okay, there's all kinds of places out there we can collect data. Okay, so when we're going through and doing this, we're going to talk about different ways of how once we collect it, how we can store it, how you can be coded how you can organize it to see patterns, and organization is a lot of just making graphs, okay? And then how you can make generalizations about large groups of people or things, just from taking a small sample of them.